Okay, hello again. Um, I think it's time for another Q&A. And I thought I'd throw in some viewer comments as well, because a lot of people have a lot of cool things to say. And I thought I'd bring some of that into it this time. Not just answer questions about what questions come into the YouTube channel, but actually in illustrating what some of the, the users of this protocol have to say about dry fasting. So let's get into it. Uh, besides the seven day dry fast twice a year, uh, are there good benefits on dry fasting every day on an 18 hour period approximately? That's intermittent fasting. Or is it better to do a three day dry fast then eating then a three day dry fast? Well, you know, it's really personal preference. I invented the Phoenix Protocol as an incorporation of the Russian form of dry fasting as a longevity protocol, not specifically for healing stuff, although it out of hand will do that. Um, so yeah, three days on, three days off, three days on, three, there's no recovery time, it's a good deal. You don't want to go past three days because you turn off your PKA, you start turning on your stem cells, you don't want to do that all the time. Um, there are benefits to short dry fast, three and five day dry fast. They're cumulative. The, once you turn on stem cells, you turn on the duplication of a stem cell into a daughter cell and one that goes on to transit amplifying cells. These start regenerating like crazy until they reach the phase of progenitors. It's really a cool thing. So you'll have more stem cells the longer you stay in the dry fast. You'll still have a good crop of stem cells on a short dry fast. So there are some benefits. Three days on, three days off. If that's convenient for you, do it. It's all cool. All right, next question. Uh, hit and run, and taking Fizzitin, 500 milligrams for a few days, then a month off. Yeah, the 500 milligram dose of Fizzitin is a daily dose, a good dose to, you know, always get rid of some of the senescent cells. But the hit and run idea is based off the mice studies, where they really dose these mice for like a week at a time or two weeks, 10 days, and, uh, and then we're off for a month. And they saw these mice, the dosed mice, return to rejuvenation. Hair growth was like youthful mice, metabolic process like youthful mice. And I've done this myself, you know. It's funny because what happens is when you do this, I did 3,000 milligrams a day. That's two bottles of F60s, a 60 count physicin on cytolife.com um, until they were exhausted. And I saw an increase in testosterone. I saw an increase in uh, reduction and elimination of hair loss. I saw a lot of good things happening um, because what happens is when you remove senescent cells, you remove the, the chemical cytokines that cause other senescent cells to occur. These cells don't die, but physicin has the ability to actually kill senescent cells, so it's really pretty cool. Um, you might try it. I'm not advocating it. I'm just saying it worked for me and worked for my partner, and uh, it's a pretty cool deal. So yeah, the high dose physicin for a short amount of time, then a month break, allows the senescent cells to be grounded by the macrophages because macrophages are really cool cells. These very, very specific white blood cells move in and out of the different cells in the extracellular matrix to find bad things and engulf them and get rid of them. So it's a really cool thing. I like it and uh, I'll probably do it yearly at this point. It's a good deal. Okay, next thing, this question here. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I've learned from some pretty reputable sources that we individually are a lot more than our own cells. Maybe hence why we're called a diverse microbiome. Yes, no? Well, sure. I mean, think about it. Um, but yeah, we are two things. I talk about neogenesis. It's the other you. There is you. There's all this stuff with the fascial matrix and all this stuff that's inside of this fascial matrix. The, bones and the circulatory system and the brain and the organs. But there's also this stuff inside the gut that determines the chemicals that keep you alive. Without a biome, you wouldn't stay alive. So we really are dependent on that first kingdom. So yes, we are more than just ourselves. We are a microbiome dependent cells like all the other kingdoms of life. Um, is there any peer review uh, research uh, the, the claims for parasite influence on appetite. Well, sure. Look at tapeworms. Look at all the other stuff. 
you end up wanting stuff you don't really need. Well, there's no requirement for sugar in the biology of this being, but other things need it because they run off of sugar. I know this for a fact. Because when I was first dry fasting, before I dry fasted, I was eating like a hundred bucks of pastries from the farmer's market every week. I mean, scones and cinnamon rolls and all this stuff. And I can't stand that stuff. It actually makes me sick now. Because it's not good for your body, it's not good for your insulin resistance, it's not good for your, your cells at all. Because your body cells do not need sugar. They need fat and protein. That's what makes them work. So when you start dry fast, you'll notice, wow, I have all these cravings go away. What are the cravings? The cravings are the parasites that are telling you to eat this stuff to keep them alive. And the way to kill them is to dry fast, because when you dry fast, they don't have the ability to make endogenous water. They have to live off the water that you drink. Which is why water fasting doesn't work. It feeds your parasites. So if you drink water during a fast, you're just gonna keep them alive. If you don't drink water during a fast, they can't make water, so they die off. Your cells can convert free fatty acids in the electron transport chain into ATP, creating water every time you make ATP. 100 grams of fat makes 110 grams of water, so you have a surplus of water, so you flush the cells out. It's a great deal. So, yeah, um, you want to be able to uh, get rid of your parasites, and appetite is influenced by them, especially not appetite so much, but specific types of food in your appetite. Okay, let's go on here. Oh, these are fun. I like some of these things. Um, let's see. Um, why isn't this on Audible's? Good question. I wish it was. Um, I'll have to look into that. Uh, as a, as a uh, introduction, though, the Phoenix Protocol is now in Espanol and en Francais. So now French-speaking people and Spanish-speaking people can buy the protocol in their language. There's 42 different countries that don't speak English, and now you can buy it in that. I also have it on Kindle on English uh, in the Phoenix Protocol. So you can get it on Kindle on Amazon, but you can also get it in other languages. I'm working on more languages. I want to have this internationally represented to all people on Earth that want to learn how to keep themselves healthy, how to keep themselves from disease, and how to live longer. The key is not living longer, the key is living younger because youth is not measured in age, it's measured in functionality. The reason you're young, when you're young, is you're living in a young body. Young bodies have very little methylation, very little toxins, very little damage. If you can reduce all those damage and reverse all that damage, you end up having the metabolism of a young person. Okay, you know, I think I'm going to cut this one short, and I've got a lot of uh, ground to cover in the subsequent answers and comments, and I want to get into some pretty full descriptions of what's going on and, and how to fill in the gaps and stuff. So I'll end this today, and I will see you tomorrow. So just stay tuned. I'm going to do a series of these things. There's a lot of ground I want to cover. Have a great day.